Welcome once again to Kids in the Kitchen. Trisha Zima here, your host. I'm here with the lovely Carl Winsborough. How are you? And you've been a chef on the Queen Mary before, haven't you? That's correct, yes. Yes. What a wonderful experience. So we have got some real talent here today along with the kids. And we've got Tara and Abby. Hello. Hello. Now, Kerry's not going to be here today because she's gone off to holiday in the tropics. But we she... I think so, I think so, but she has sent all these bananas back. Uh oh. So have you got something we can do with bananas? There's a million and one things to do with bananas, apart from going bananas that is. <laughs> well I'll leave you two working with these gorgeous bananas. I don't get it because you can go bananas. You can indeed. <laughs> bananas! I already think you are bananas. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, I think Carrie's been up there playing with some monkeys and she sent back a lot of bananas. Monkey well, friends. There's a good one for you. There's a good one for you. What's yellow on the outside, or rather yellow on the inside, and orange on the outside? A monkey! No, it's a banana dressed as a carrot. There you go. <laughs> it's a carrot? <laughs> oh, don't tell Carrie that one. She'll think she's in her day job. She'll get jealous. <laughs> and later in the show, we're also going to be having caramelized bananas with Gabriel Gattani. He's come up with a lovely treat for us as well. Yummy! Fantastic. Looking forward to it. So tonight, or today rather, on Kids in the Kitchen, we are going to be cooking uh, pork, pineapple and banana curry. So how does that sound then, girls? All right? All right, okay then. So let's get you guys cracking with some work to do then. All right? Oh, garlic. So yes. Do you know how to peel garlic really quickly? Uh, yeah, you cut off the top and then you peel it. No, so I'll show you an even quicker way to peel garlic Don't you really squash quickly. It? You can do. It. You can you can do the. Uh, I like the, squashing them. You can do the Ian Hewittson of Huey's Cooking Adventures and really go for a big slap, bang, and squash it. Or you can just grab your knife, and then with the palm of your hand. Flatten it down until it squishes, and when it squishes, look how easy the skin falls off. Look at that. Let me try. So you have a go. Go on, put your shoulder into it, girl. We'll just take away the bad ends on the back there. So we'll get rid of them. And if you want to, do you want to chop this up really nice and small? Do you want it? Or Abby, do you want to chop it up? Well, I'm in front of Well, look, I'll just show you quickly what I do to chop up the garlic straight away is keeping the point of the, uh, the knife on the on the chopping board. The rocking horse. Yeah, just the rocking horse motion and just chop it down like so. All right, and then you can just keep, you know the way you did it with chopping the herbs? Keep your hand on top of the blade, the point of the blade onto the chopping board and just keep chopping it down. So if one of you guys wants to chop that up and then I'll get on working Gals. with the, uh, this is it. Get on working with the pork. All right, so we got wonderful pork fillets here, which we're going to use for the uh, pork meat in the curry. And what I'm going to do is just a little restaurant trick for those of you out there. We like to trim off all these little bits of uh, sinews here because sometimes this can be a little bit chewy when you're eating the pork. So we're going to take these off. While Tara's doing a wonderful job with the garlic there. Eh? Superb. And then what we're going to do with these, we'll cut them down into nice big dices. So how are you getting on there? Nearly done? Sticky. Well this is because garlic contains a lot of uh, 
flavour some oils, that's why it's sticky. And uh, there's a lot of nutrients in Ooh. the garlic as well. Antioxidants, they call it. I can't remember this joke very well. Alright. What person doesn't like garlic? Well, I know vampires don't like garlic. Is that right? And why don't vampires like garlic then? I think it takes, um, I don't know actually. I think it's because it gives you bad breath. <laughs> Would you like to try chopping the meat? Yes? Abby, you want to turn it to garlic? Abby will have a go at the garlic. All right then. So if you just slide over this way a little bit then, so give Abby some room. And then we're using another different knife as well, if you, just in case you might not have noticed, we're using a, like a butcher's knife or what we call a boning knife. Yeah, you can cut things in many different ways and shapes, but I mean, when we're cutting with the meat, what we like to do is to keep it so, so it cooks nice and tender, and we, the way you're cutting it there is, a, is against the grain of the meat. And if you cut along the grain of the meat and, and slice it this way, believe it or not, the meat will be slightly tougher than normal. All right, so Abby, you're doing a great job there with the garlic. I've just put a, about 100 milliliters of canola oil into, into our saucepan, which is hot already. And Abby, if you could be so kind as to give me that garlic there. Let, let me collect that garlic up off you. Could I put the meat in? Could me and Abby put the meat in? Yes. Well, we're going to put the garlic oh. in straight away. And the reason why we put the garlic in first... Simmer it. Yeah, it's, no, it's to release the flavour, so when oh. we add the meat then to the garlic, it will start, it will start to take on the flavour of the garlic straight away. Alright, so I'll tilt the pan this way so the oil is down this end and you put the meat in at the top end like that. Brilliant! There we go, so I'm just going to leave this on the back. Okay, so while that's on the back, cooking, uh, we're just going to dice up some pineapple. pineapple. So I've opened a, a lovely tin of pineapple rings here and what we're going to do, we're going to cut these into chunks about the same size as the pork. Alright, so now how do you think we're going to cut these up? Alright then, so you do one stack then Tara and then we'll leave Abby to do another stack. We need another knife. No, you don't, you can share, that's alright. So show Abby how you would do it. Fantastic. Now, would, you, would you say they might be just a little bit too big? No. No? You think Kids like that right? size, all especially right, this size. Uh, go on, then. but make sure you wash your hands. Garlic gives it flavour, right? That's correct, yep, and it also gives it a nice aroma. So when you're, when you're eating the food, you get the wonderful smell of garlic as well as the beautiful flavour. You're making me hungry. Oh, great. Well, I hope you are because this is going to be enough to feed an army. Really? Yeah. Anyway, so what we do is, <laughs> with the garlic and the oil in the pan and with the pork as well, we're going to just lightly brown it off. As you can see, it's just taking on a little bit of colour. Fortunately for us, this is the pork fillet, which is the most tender cut of meat that you can get on any uh, on any meat on any animal. And do you know where the fillets come from? Don't want to know. You don't want to know the fillets <laughs> come from the, the small bit in the back there, and they're the, one of the most used muscles. That's why they don't have a lot of fat on them because you use your fillets, your fillet muscles. Every animal uses them a lot of the time, nearly all of the time when they're up standing around and walking around. You know. Including horses. Including horses. Like now the pork is I cooking in the pan. We're going to give this... Is that going to make it spark? No. We're going to give this three generous tablespoons of curry powder. All right? Um, Don't make it too curryish. No, 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 no. This is a mild curry powder. All right? And the difference... Do you know the difference between a hot curry powder and a mild curry powder? I think I do. The, the, the difference between hot and mild is the amount of chili powder or chili peppers that they actually stick into the curry powder as a blend. 
uh, and it's the chili which actually gives it the fearsome hot flavor in the curry. Now Ooh. we, all the other spices are mild to taste anyway. That looks really nice. It's cooking it. That's it. Powder. And the reason why we, well, do you know why we add the chili powder in at this stage? No, because then it soaks up all the um, oil. Right? Well, a little bit, a little bit, but the reason being is because when you start to fry the, the spices in a curry powder, it releases all the aromas and the flavors. Yeah, then you don't get all the flavor. It is gone yellow, but that's hey, good. Hey, can you come over here, please? Why has that become yellow? I'll tell you why it's become yellow, because in the curry powder, you have a spice in the curry powder called turmeric, and turmeric actually grows from a root, okay? You sure? It, it's a root in the ground, yeah, and it's a yellow root, and it's a dye. You and sure it's not it. saffron? No, no, it's not saffron. Saffron's a different spice. Yeah, but saffron makes things go yellow. Oh, it, it makes things go yellow or orangey or a little tinge of red, but turmeric is more yellow than, than the saffron. Oh. Okay, so... When we're at this stage now, and you can smell all those beautiful spices, yeah, all the aromas like coming out, it certainly does. Okay. We're just going to take a teaspoon of tomato paste. So we're at this stage now, and as you can see, just so we can show it up, that the uh, the spices have released all of their flavours. The pork is nearly fully cooked, all right, and we've also put a little bit of tomato paste in there as well, just to give it a bit bit of extra colour. All right then, Abby, if you would like to put the pineapples in, my dear. Jake's time! Okay, go for it. Uh, what do you use to open a banana? I have no idea. What do you use to open a banana? A monkey! A monkey. <laughs> Unreal. All right, so we're going to stir that in and give it this a good... This is tropical. It is indeed. It's for carrot -y. Well, you know, I, I had a thought that carroty was on holiday up there in Queensland in the tropics, so why not make a tropical, a tropical curry. curry? If not, why very, not? Very unnormal. Unnormal. All <laughs> right. Okay, so if you want to add the tomatoes into this now, then. You want to do the tomatoes, Abby? Yeah. Do you want to put the tomatoes in? I really want to put the bacon in. All right. Okay, now be careful because it is hot on the stove there. That's it. Straight in. Slop, slop, there you go, slop. and I'll take slop. this out of your way. Would you like to stir that in, Abby? Yes. Do you All have right. a joke, Abby? Okay, How just a just a, a just a tip when you're stirring in. If you want to hold the handle of the saucepan as well, just so it doesn't slide on the stove. That's it. And What's your it. joke? Give it a real good stir. Why don't bananas like to get sunburned? I don't know. Why don't bananas like to get sunburned? Actually, I don't know for once. Because they peel. Oh! Do you peel when you get sunburned? No. No? Sometimes. You're ducky. And you Do peel. You? Me? Oh, I peel all it? the time. Just I've like my I've Sometimes. never got sunburned. You've never got sunburned? Well, that's the, the bestest and most clever way because sunburn can be dangerous for you. So Very. It's always good to protect yourself when you're out in the sun. Okay then, Tara, would you like to add now the coconut, uh, the coconut cream coconut. there? Excuse me. It looks thick. Oh, it didn't spark. And there we go. Do you want to stir that in? Holding the handle of the saucepan as well. Fantastic. So now we're going to leave this on the stove now to cook for about uh, 30 minutes. Maybe a little more. Just to nice make, just, yeah, just to make sure that all that pork is properly cooked in there. And also so the sauce gets a chance to thicken up naturally. All right. Are we just having the curry by no, itself? No, I'm going to be doing some rice with that. So I've got a pan of water on here for the rice, but we don't need to put that in because it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes to cook rice. So we need to make sure that the curry's cooked first. It's really nice color. I like it. Beautiful. You can see the tomato in the... Fantastic. So we've already got two more ingredients now to add to this curry when it's nearly ready. Do you know what they are? Um, rice and bananas. Ah, actually, and we have some coriander as well. <gasps> coriander! Yeah, did, did I hear correctly? Are you growing coriander in your garden these days? Yeah. You are? Fantastic. We'll leave this cooked now for about 30, 35 minutes, stirring occasionally so things don't stick to the bottom of the saucepan. And then we should be in for a really tasty treat and really looking forward to it.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Kids in the Kitchen with the clown, Tara, the cook, Chelsea, and Gabriel, and the, the bunny. master, and Gabriel Gatte, and the, bu the, the bunny, the, the bunny. master chef, called the bunny. the bunny. Now we are going to prepare for you something that we know you are going to love so much. We are going to cook some bananas, we are going to caramelize them, we will show you in a minute how to do it that we are going to serve with something that is going to be popular with everybody ice cream and chocolate chocolate sauce ice cream and chocolate sauce oh crazy. we are going to popular. start by the, the dish is very quick okay so we are going to make the chocolate sauce and to make chocolate sauce you need a little bit of cream we are going to put a little we are going to cook four bananas all right a little bit of cream in a saucepan we are going to bring the cream to the bowl. Do you want to put that on the stove? Okay. And then separately, yes, do you want to... Uh, Cut chocolate? Yes, I'll show you uh, how to do it. Probably the easiest mm -hmm. way is to put your hand like that. Like that, and then like that. So okay. when you want to melt chocolate, it's always a little bit easier Can I help? if the chocolate is cut into small pieces, okay? Because it won't take so long to cook. To, to melt and also because the cream is warm uh, the cream will be hot and the chocolate will melt straight away if the chocolate is big then it will take a long time for it to melt and it will even yeah, harden in the pan how are you going it's hard it's hard yes chocolate oh no but no it's best not to use when, when people use knife actually this is really interesting it's best if two people don't try to handle the knife at the same time because you can really have an accident when you do that. Okay? All right, now the cream. Now the cream has just well, Do you want to put the chocolate oh, yes. in that? Okay. Now it's best to use a wooden spoon. Be careful, the pan is hot. And then do it straight away and, and continuously because little by little, the chocolate is going to melt. Now, it's doing it very quickly. Tara, yeah, it's good. Chop a banana. You want to just peel those those bananas. Banana. Uh, it's good to buy them just ripe, you know, not too green, not too ripe, because they will all together and it will give us a much, much nicer result. It's good. Wait, wait. So what we are going to do here with the bananas is that we are going to coat them with a little bit of sugar. You could put some um, you know, some orange flavor, orange grated zest, or something else with them, but for the moment, that's what we are going to do. It's good. It's so, nice. yeah. so, continue to stir a large movement like that because that could be what we want. We want the, the sauce to be very smooth and because if you stop stirring too early, not all the chocolate will be melted and the sauce will be not, not smooth. You will think that there's something wrong with it. Great, well, that's good. So the next step, actually you know what it's best to put them here, like that. The next step is to put a little bit of chocolate, oh not chocolate, of sugar on the bananas and you want to turn them around so you know just so to coat them a little bit like that. That's great. So simple to do. You know this is a dessert that in my family when sometimes we want a, a dessert at the end of at the weekend for something you know special not not maybe on an everyday basis and there's nothing you know that we can think of almost certainly there is a few bananas and we can quite easily prepare it okay that's great well you know what we we are going to do the sauce is nicely melted we are going now to the stove and we are going to cook the bananas now you would think that too many cooks for the broth well not today so we are going to cook the bananas in a non-stick pan we want to caramelize them so we need to we are going to put a little bit of butter in the pan and then Ooh. when the butter is melted we are going to i'm going to put the bananas in the pan and can we do one each uh, what do you mean one each uh, can we put a banana each in you can put one banana each in want to uh, do one oh, yeah Great. And Chelsea? Great. Lovely. And there's a little bit of extra sugar here. We can uh, put the sugar 
I'm, I'm not come here so you can all see me. We, we can put the sugar in that and that will, together with the butter, it will caramelize and it will taste so good. You can't, you can't disappear from the kitchen when you do that because otherwise it could burn. It could burn very easily. And, and don't even try to touch the bananas with your fingers because the caramel is very, very hot. Very gentle because the bananas are fragile. We want to keep them all. So Ooh, it looks nice. Good. Nice, huh? nice color. Yeah, it's nice color. Over. So you see the brown. When something gets brown, it is the sugar that has cooked and caramelized. Okay, let's go to the bench. It looks cool, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, it is so popular. Everybody loves that kind of thing. So basically, after that, it's very simple. A little bit of banana. Yeah. I got an idea. We can make eyes. We're gonna make a smiley face. Well, you can do that. But when you These serve something like that, because the ice cream is melting, because the, the banana will make it uh, melt even faster. Uh, usually, you just serve it quite quickly like that. So it is uh, very simple, it's a little bit of a, an indulgence, of course you probably would not eat something like that every day, but at the weekend when we are together and we want something special and something that is not expensive for the family, bananas caramelized with a little bit of sugar served with ice cream and chocolate sauce, um, it's very very hard to beat because it's a uh, it's a banana that has had a, a nervous breakdown. It's a broken banana. <laughs> yes. Chocolate, lots of it. All right, so do, should we give the website? Yeah! Do you know where you can get that recipe? www.tmz.com.au www. 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 And, what and you click on the kicks, and the kicks stand for kids in the kitchen. Oh, how clever! Now, we are going to give that to the dogs and the cats because the girls don't like chocolate here. Yeah? Oh, they love chocolate. Well, I hope I you have enjoyed surprised. this segment and as much as we have because this is something we are looking forward to it now. Okay, girls, this is mine. No, this is mine. Okay, so we're back to our curry. And uh, what we're going to do now, we're just going to finish off our curry dish, okay, and we're going to get ready to serve it. So, Abby, if you would like to peel me these two bananas, mm -hmm. and do you remember when we, when we cut the pineapple and the pork for the curry, if you want to cut these bananas about the same size, that would be absolutely brilliant, all right? And then what I would like you to do, Tara, would be to chop up this lovely coriander, all right, nice and fine. So, first off, cut off the roots so we can get rid of them. Beautiful. And what we'll do is I'll start plating up the curry whilst we're waiting. So here we have ready prepared is some lovely steamed rice. You quite all right there, young lady? <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to build this up like a wall all the way around the outside of the plate. Look. See that? It's the wall of bananas. This is it. And this, is, this is normally how we serve curry. To keep the rabbits out. This is it. And we build a nice little wall with a well in the centre so the curry can sit nicely in the well. So I'll just bring our nice hot curry pot over. Now we've taken this off the heat because uh, with bananas, because they're a soft fruit anyway, they actually don't really need a lot of cooking. So uh, we're just going to pop them in and the residual heat or the heat just left over in the pan is what we'll cook. So we'll take, we'll take roughly half, roughly. All right, there you go, chop it, there you go. And half goes straight into the sauce pot. That's it, you sprinkle it off. And then we're gonna take, add these big chunks of banana there. And we're just gonna pop them straight in. Yep. That's and can you smell that smell? Yeah. From the coriander? Well, can we, can, won't you put that in, can we put a smiley face on the, with the bananas on top? You can indeed to make it look Yay. pretty. 
And even if you like, we can use some of the leftover coriander and make green hair for the face if you like. Yay! And there we go, look Yummy. at that, beautiful. Some pieces of pork. Can I make the hair? Yeah, we're gonna use, we're just gonna make them a bit small so we can have more. Yes, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna put a smiley face on there? Yeah. Okay then. One eye. One eye. And another eye. And a nose. So you can put the, the we can put the coriander look just on the top there. There you go. And look, there we have it. Wonderful pork, pineapple, and banana curry. So I can't wait to tuck into this. What do you reckon, guys? Yeah. Ready? Choose your weapon. Ooh. Oh my goodness. The bananas are gone. All gone. All the bananas are gone. And we managed to use them all, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. What treat have you created here? Oh, we have pork, pineapple, and banana curry. That which is, smells divine. It's a little bit different, but it's uh, certainly tasty. And is it the coriander from your garden, Tara? <gasps> yeah. And you grew it all yourself? Yeah. Well done. Well, Katie will certainly be disappointed she missed this lovely treat. I think she's going to be very disappointed, actually. I'm, I'm starving. I can't wait to tuck in. <laughs> I'd say, I see two kids who are about to dive in. Don't wait. Quick, get some. Tell me how it tastes. Get some in there now. you got to get some, too. Oh, I will. Yeah, there she is. Look at that. Hot. Hot. <laughs> hot. Well, blow on it first, maybe. Hot in temperature, but not hot in spices, huh? Mmm. That is mm. hot. Do you like it? I think. Oh, I better oh. lick your arm quick. <laughs> I'm going to have a piece of that. I think that is mm. the pork. It is Absolutely indeed. delicious. Carl, that is just divine. Where did you run across this recipe? Oh, just uh, surfing through some old uh, recipes that we've done on the, on the ships yes. from yesteryear. And uh, yeah, when we go through the Caribbean and places like that, we uh, pick up a lot of fresh produce like bananas and so on. And, of course. And we need to use them, so we come up with all these wonderful recipes. Oh, absolutely beautiful. That is a lovely dinner. Thank you very much for joining us. Girls, you have done a stunning job as usual. Mm. Uh, who's the best chef? <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested in the recipes and kids in the kitchen, you can see www.tmz.com.